Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. Tonight, police are searching for a man they say robbed a bank in Lexington at gunpoint. We'll have the breaking details. We're tracking a murder investigation in Fleming County. And it's a day many have been waiting for. Today marks the opening day of the fall meet at Keeneland. But we'll tell you about some changes new to the track you need to know about. WKYT News at 6 starts now. We're tracking a breaking news alert out of Lexington tonight. Just a couple of hours ago, police say an armed man walked into the People's Exchange Bank off Richmond Road and demanded money. Police just released this surveillance video of the suspect. WKYT's Jerrica Insko was at the bank and has more on the investigation. It was about two and a half hours ago that Lexington police tell us this bank off Richmond Road was robbed. And this same bank was robbed just six months ago. Two bank tellers who were inside People's Exchange Bank at the time of the robbery described the suspect as a black man about 5'10 with a medium build wearing a gray hoodie and black mask. Lexington police tell us no customers were inside at the time of the robbery. They also say that no one was hurt when the man pointed a handgun at the tellers and demanded money. Now once he had that cash, police say he ran from the bank heading towards Mentel Park just a block away off Richmond Road. That's where canines were able to track the man. And right now, police aren't sure if he is connected to other robberies. We always consider that possibility just because of the nature of the crime. Uh, and we will again consider that as we go forward with the investigation. That suspect is still on the run, but the scene has been cleared for now. In Lexington, Jerrica Insko, WKYT. And another case we are tracking. Police are searching for a second man now in connection with a Kentucky murder case. State police now say that Kevin Howard is wanted on murder, theft, and evidence tampering charges after remains were found in Fleming County earlier this week. Yesterday, we told you that police arrested Charles Black on those same charges. But as WKYT Sam Smith tells us, tonight we are also learning more about who the victim could be. It's our top story at 6. A body was recovered along Ringo's Grange City Road in Fleming County on Wednesday. The victim in this case has not been identified, but Charles Black was arrested that night in connection to the death. His arrest citation says he told police he helped someone remove the body from his house and he brought it to this road and buried the body in a shallow grave. I talked with a man that knows Black and he says he's surprised Black is facing these charges. I didn't believe anything Charlie would ever do anything like that. Records also show that Black told police he burned a mattress the body was removed from. He admitted he used the victim's ATM card to withdraw $200, and he admitted to driving the victim's vehicle. Again, police have not identified the victim at this point, but they do say that vehicle belonged to Randall Russ, a University of Cincinnati professor and substitute teacher in Grant County that's been missing since August. All the kids loved him as a substitute. They said he, like, you know, he, he believed in being the, the good teacher, you know what I'm saying? Like the one that tried to reach out to kids. Police are also looking for Kevin Howard of Owingsville. The 37-year-old is wanted on murder, tampering, and theft charges, just like Black is. Anyone with information is asked to call state police. In Fleming County, Sam Smith, WKYT. Black will be in court on October 9th for a preliminary hearing. He is in jail in Mason County. The summer-like weather is over, and it is starting to feel like fall here in the bluegrass. It's kind of a rude change. Yeah. More showers are moving in tonight, bringing in even cooler temperatures for the weekend. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell has a look at what we can expect for our weekend. Jim? Uh, how's it looking for people heading out to Keeneland tomorrow on that football game tomorrow night? A lot going on. I'll tell you what, during the Keeneland hours, it might be a little better because you might be in the mid-50s because during the game, we're talking about the 40s. Windy either way, though. We look outside right now with Kentucky's most powerful live Doppler. That is Defender. And we are tracking some showers now in eastern Kentucky and another batch just out to our west. This will eventually roll through here probably later on tonight. Even has a little bit of lightning with it, so a couple of thunderstorms have developed with that system. We go down to our south around the London area. Here comes that rain again for you. You go all the way into Jackson County and all the way over into Lee and Asley County is getting in on some of that activity. 
For the folks there in Sandy Hook and down toward West Liberty, a decent little shower passing by for you as well. A gusty shower with some heavier rain, at least for a little while, now starting to pull away. We're tracking all of the changes, so this evening temperatures will vary. We're basically in the mid 60s, it looks like. Winds will remain very active, especially with that next batch of showers coming through overnight tonight. Upper 30s, low 40s, a good possibility through the area. And then tomorrow, only around 55 degrees. Windy conditions. It's going to be a rough one out there. I'll bring more of these changes down coming up for you with our hour by hour forecast here in a few minutes. A former Kentucky lawmaker spending life in prison will now get a chance to argue that he should be able to withdraw his guilty plea. Steve Nunn is serving a life sentence for the 2009 murder of his former fiance, Amanda Ross. But he filed a motion in February to withdraw his guilty plea because his attorney, he says, failed him. A hearing on that motion will be held on October 30th in Fayette Circuit Court. A Lexington Councilwoman faced a judge today. District 2 Councilmember Siobhan Akers is still in court right now, arguing that she will, should be allowed to stay on the November ballot. Akers' challenger in that race, Michael Stewart, claims Akers did not get the required number of signatures necessary to run. He also claims she does not live in District 2. Right now, a judge is listening to both sides plead their case. Earlier today, Fayette County Clerk Don Blevins discussed the difficulty of reviewing some of the signatures on Acres' petition to run for office. It happens all the time, not limited to Ms. Acres' petitions, where one property owner will sign, say, husband, sign for wife, and a resident child eligible to vote. And you'll have three appearing to be the same exact handwriting, but in effect signing signatures for those voters. If a judge rules Akers is ineligible to run, her name would remain on the ballot, but votes for her would not count. Election bar is now closed. A judge ordered the art bar on Euclid Avenue to close until a hearing next Friday. The bar has been the center of controversy after two shootings near the bar involving rowdy crowds and police. The city's board of adjustment recently revoked the art bar's conditional use permit. That meant the bar was supposed to close immediately. But city leaders say the bar ignored the move and opened anyway. After today's hearing, the owner's attorney says he thinks they are one step closer to reaching a solution that will benefit everyone in the community. And we think that we are coming to common ground uh, for something that makes sense for both uh, the business community uh, that are involved in this uh, adventure as well as the community. So yes, I've, I definitely believe that we're moving in the right direction and I'm very hopeful that we'll have a permanent resolution shortly. Another hearing is scheduled for next Friday at 1130 to determine if the bar will have to close permanently. We are learning more information about the suspects involved in a Danville shooting. Yesterday, police arrested Rico Penix, Robin Adams, and Patrick Brand in connection with the case. Court documents reveal that Adams drove three other people to the Domino's. Those papers also say that Brand called in a fake order to get the driver to leave the store. Penix's arrest warrant says that he and another person then went inside and robbed the store. Danville police say the victim, Zoe Reed, was shot during that robbery. The 21-year-old has improved, but she is still in serious condition at UK Hospital. Yesterday, we told you two patients with Ebola-like symptoms were isolated in Kentucky several months ago. They were kept in isolation at the University of Kentucky Hospital. It turns out neither patient actually had the deadly virus, but health officials in Lexington tell us they are prepared. In a story that's new tonight at 6, WKYT's Garrett Weimer talks with paramedics about how they are preparing in case the virus ever comes to Lexington. Lexington's EMS director tells me that paramedics and emergency services have been preparing to deal with Ebola for months now. Ready to answer the call, he says. Expecting that at some point we'd be dealing with this very day where we have the first case here within the United States. Stanton says crews know how to handle Ebola because they already deal with similar diseases. You know, whether it be hepatitis or HIV or, um, uh, or meningitis or, or any of those types of things, there's a lot of deadly diseases we deal with on a daily basis. And so this is another one in that line um, that we deal with. 
Dr. Stanton says crews already have the gear they'd need to deal with an Ebola case. Every EMS uh, provider you'll see with gloves no matter where they go and throughout their interaction. Masks available as well. And if, the, if it necessary um, with transport, and you'll see that on occasion in our area with transport of other types of illnesses, um, the gowns and full protective equipment as well. Stanton says one of the best things they can do to diagnose it early is to ask the right questions when they're getting a patient's history. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Paramedics tell us that emergency services will meet next week to develop a larger plan for handling any possible Ebola cases. It is a day many in the bluegrass have been anxiously awaiting since April. Today is opening day for the fall meet at Keeneland. Officer Don flew over the track in Sky First today. This year's meet brings with it some changes. WKYT's Mike Linden was at the track today and has more from trainers about the new racetrack. For the first time since 2006, the thoroughbred horses at Keeneland will race on a dirt track instead of on an artificial poly track surface. We had a dirt surface up until the fall of 2006, and that's when we switched to the synthetic polytrack surface. And that was a great surface for us, but we felt we, like we wanted to be part of the national dialogue about how to make dirt tracks um, safer in the industry. The new track at Keeneland is made up of several different components, with an 87% mixture of sand and 13% silt and clay. It's the sand that gives the horses control and the silt and clay mixture that monitors moisture. A lot of, of the horsemen that come here are coming from other dirt tracks. And, uh, and the synthetics aren't as prevalent as we expected them to be at one point in time. So to keep consistency from racetrack to racetrack, you know, they just made the decision to, to, to get the horsemen in here that they wanted and the horses that they wanted for their big races, they needed to go back to dirt. Keeneland officials say even with a major overhaul to the race surface, that trainers are pleased with the changes. We've had nothing but positive comments about the track since they started training on it. So, you know, a lot of people like us, we want to see racing on it and see how it holds up through, uh, you know, through the first few days of racing. But uh, so far, so good. And, and, you know, the feedback we've had has been really good. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Always a great day to be at the track. Keeneland officials tell us that all of the sand, silt, and clay materials used in the new track come from right here in Kentucky. Lexington shoppers enjoying this. A new section of the mall open today. We'll bring you the latest on the construction. Tonight, the Pink Out Festival is going on in Lexington. Coming up, more how you can get involved with the Race for the Cure. Some good news for shoppers. A renovated section of Fayette Mall is now open to shoppers. It's all part of a project to bring several new stores to Fayette Mall. Those stores are expected to open by the end of the month. Eddie Bauer, the Cheesecake Factory, New Balance, and Chipotle are just a few of the stores being built in the old Sears space. Shoppers say they're excited about the progress. We were in the rain a lot of times walking around. We, it was a cover over us, but it was raining through the cover. So it was good. This is, this is much better. According to the Fayette Mall website, the grand reopening of the middle wing will be held on November 7th. Tonight, people in Lexington are getting ready to paint this town pink. It is all part of the Pink Out Festival in preparation for tomorrow's annual Race for the Cure. Teams and participants can head over to Whitaker Bank Ballpark tonight to pick up their race packets and T-shirts. And it's not too late to register for the race if you want to help out with the cause. Susan G. Komen's Race for the Cure raises money for breast cancer research and care in 58 Kentucky counties. Organizers say they're excited about the turnout. Being a survivor, I'm a one-year survivor, and it means the world to me to see this much support. The Pink Out Festival runs until 8 o'clock tonight. The race starts tomorrow morning at 9. Registration begins at 7. Sam and I both will be there bright and early, so we hope to see you there, too.